Hello, everyone, and welcome to Mupo and Friends. We are Manuela Messina and I'm Michelle Mupo. And we're brought to you by Mupo TV. And you could catch this show and many others at www.mupotv.com. And if you want to know more about our company or you're looking for a career in the entertainment industry, um, you know, look us up, mupoentertainment.com. And stay tuned because Sundays at 2 p.m. Eastern, you can watch Mupo and Friends. And I have to say, um, our show definitely is rocking. Um, They've actually, the people that we've interviewed have actually shared things on Mupo and Friends before it even gets exploited out. They Into sure have. They sure have. And we just want to thank you guys so much for joining us today, where we love to bring you guys awesome celebrities and entrepreneurs you want to know about. By the way, Em, we have our own app. It's on Android and iOS, so go to the stores and uh, Google Play Store and the iOS, uh, and, you know, Apple Store and download Mupo Entertainment. Make sure you guys download that, all right? And also, you got to watch us on Roku and Fire Stick as well. And we're continuing to grow, so if you haven't done it yet, be sure to download the Mupo Entertainment app on Android, iOS, Roku, and Fire Stick. So, Michelle, did you have a Mupo Awesome Week? I always have a Mupo Awesome Week. How about you? I sure did, too. It doesn't get any better than this. You know, it will get better. Trust me. It's awesome True. now, but it's going to be even Mupo Awesome later. So True. with that said, we're going to take a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back with our special guest. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Mupo and Friends. Our special guest today is an actress, director, and producer who's worked on the small, big, and digital screen. She's done stage work, film, and episodic TV, everything from classic sitcoms like Seinfeld to miniseries like Ladies on the Lake, from Disney to Desperate Housewives. She's done it all, and she is the best known for her role in The Bold and the Beautiful, The Young and the Restless, and Days of Our Lives. Please welcome Patrika Darbo. Hello, Patrika. How are you? I'm very Hello, fine. Thank you, Emmanuel. How are you? Good. Good. I, I'm very excited that you're here. And and so you, you need to say hey to your mom for me, okay? I definitely will. Her name is Phyllis. It's like it's great because uh, you know she has been a fan of days of, days of our lives since I was in her stomach, and I'm not kidding. Like she was just watching me. I think it's interesting is that. The, the daytime, which used to have like 18 to 20 soaps, and we're now only down to four. Um, and I was on GH for a brief time, too. So I've had um, all the soaps that are still in the air I've been on, and I'm so grateful for that. But I think it's, um, it's generational. The soaps are generational. There are so many people that I've met in the 20-something years that I've done days that go my mom was watching while I was in the womb. I came out and we watched there. I have a fan who's become a dear friend whose daughter was in a car accident and would not tell the police her mother's name or how to get a hold of her until it was two o'clock because her mother watches days from one to two and she did not want to get in trouble wow. if she interrupted days of our lives. So I know how... Um, much of these soaps mean to people. And so it's, uh, I'm just, again, um, I'm just grateful that I've got to be a part of it. And, and they've changed a lot over the decades. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, it's so interesting. When I first started, we were very current. We were maybe two weeks ahead. So you, you kind of knew what was happening all the time. Your, your script would be delivered on the front door so you could read that and get your lines out and do all that. Now, for days, we're like six months ahead. So um, when I go into work, I may do um, a piece of the show, a piece of the show, a piece of the show, and a piece of this show because they're trying to schedule all the actors we're working with. Um, for example, Chloe, Nadia, my daughter, 
her um, family now lives in North Carolina, South Carolina, excuse me. Um, uh, Ari Zucker, she lives up in Northern California now. Um, let's see. Um, suddenly I can only think of his name, Eric. Um, the character Eric, the priest. What the heck is his name? Uh, oh, help me there. He was the priest and now he's not the priest and he was in love with Nicole and now Nicole's with Ray. Right. Okay, what is his name? Anyway, he lives in Texas. So when they're trying to schedule, they have to realize that or, or take into, um, uh, uh, into effect that they, got to, they have to go, okay, if she misses her plane or if the plane is delayed or if the plane is canceled, we might have to change this. So we have to give her two days notice, make sure she can be in here ahead of time for this. And he has to come from Texas. A couple of times he's missed the plane or they canceled the flight and we had to rearrange our entire shooting day. So it sometimes is very chaotic. Uh, the heroes of this story that I'm telling you are our front office, the people that do the scheduling and trying to figure out who's where and who's on what and who's on first and who's going to second and how many times they've struck in that kind of stuff. Um, the cast is amazing, but our crew, <laughs> unbelievable. Our directors who have maybe doing five shows at one time because it's only a piece of something. Um, Randy, who has to try to do scheduling and making sure people are there and take care of our COVID tests because we get tested every day. So it's it's every day. Oh, yeah. When you go into work, if I now, for example, I haven't been on this week when I do get to go back, I will be probably be called in at like 530 in the morning. I will have to sit in my dressing room until I'm cleared, which is usually two hours. Then I will go to hair and makeup. So it's a long day sometimes, but they make sure that we're safe. That, so. It's a test and wait kind of day when you haven't worked for a while. Otherwise, you come in, you get a test to make sure if, if in two hours, if they go, OK, whoever she's been near, we have to do something because she's positive. But, you know, knock what I've been negative all the time. So it's good. Thank God. It's God. crazy. It's crazy. The, the COVID thing has really uh, all all the now. I mean, any show that you're doing, you have to be tested. I get an audition. I have to go do an audition when we're through. Um, and there's a page and a half of the COVID rules, you know, are you boosted? Have you been boosted? Are you near? What are you doing? Will you do this? Will you do that? And it's, it's crazy, but they're trying to keep everybody safe. And, um, at this point, it's up to the producers to what tests are going to, I mean, what parameters are set. Uh, the unions have a basic thing, but then the producers have the widespread kind of thing. So, uh. I was just about to tell you some tales that I'm not allowed to tell you. <laughs> I'm not bit my tongue there for a second, but anyway. Um, so there's a lot of things going on. So, wow. And uh, have you ever cracked up on a set, particularly when you have to give like a long soap look at the end of a scene? Oh, let me just ask you. First of all, I didn't understand when I first came on, and you will remember. Well, you were in the womb. You don't. Your mom will remember this. But it was kind of like. You're like, no, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> and I'd be going, what's wrong? Why are we not moving? There's something wrong here. Or there? I didn't understand those things where they stay on your face like crazy. And Jeannie Cooper, may she rest in peace from YNR. She used to be like, she used to know how to hold that thing. So <laughs> she, was, she was an unbelievable, wonderful person. Um, but she's the one that said, this is how you have to do it. And I didn't. I, ha I thought it was coming on to serve beer and peanuts. Who the hell knew I was going to have this gorgeous doctor and be a stinker. It was like unbelievable. And then, but I never understood that till about two weeks into film <laughs> that I had to stay there. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. Um, now it's a little faster. I think I've cracked up when working with Kevin Spiritus, who is a darling. We, we, um, when we first started, we, and with, um, uh, who she played nurse Allie, um, Lisa Lindy, brilliant actress, wonderful. Um, her dad wrote, let's, let's kill Earl. The, that song that the Dixie chicks thing. I don't know if you're into that, but anyway, she and Kevin and I, because we were in our first storyline, we're on a road trip in and out of dumpsters doing all kinds of crazy things. And we had a good time laughing at stuff and we still do. Um, with Kevin, with Kevin doing backflips at one point on, we had the best time in the hot tub no, and me no. going, please put a lot of bubbles. My boobs float. 
put a lot of bubbles oh, in my no. boots. So, so yeah, so well, there were some experiences going on there that were very fun. That's excellent. Very fun. <laughs> Do you have any tricks that you could, you know, tell the audience about how you memorize your scripts for the soaps? Because you, you said you get it and you have to learn a script a day, right? It's a little bit older. You learn, uh, we shoot a movie script a day. I may have 20 to 30 pages to memorize as well as the other actors breaking down a script, which is generally 90 pages long. Um, and we shoot all of it unless we have to do a piece of another show in there and a piece of that one goes into the future. So, um, but it's a long, it's a lot of pages that we learn. Um, I just, I read it first of all, at least a hundred to 200 times, just keep reading it. And I only have myself, my husband's not good at it. Uh, and so he's, he, and he wants no part of it because it just frustrates him when he doesn't do something right. And I'm going, don't make me go letter perfect. I'm trying to tell the story here. So it's not a good thing. So sometimes when you get on the set, it's the first time you've heard the other person's lines out loud in comparison. Um, so I, I mean, I virtually don't leave my sofa just doing the lines over and over with myself and things like that. I've tried putting on my phone, but they, it doesn't, <laughs> doesn't work. Again, technical dinosaurs. So I'm like going, what the hell was that? So it, that doesn't work. So it's crazy. It's crazy. But it, you know, it's, um, it's like anything. It's a muscle, your brain is a muscle. And uh, I find, it, um, I had an audition and uh, two weeks ago, I shot two shows on Monday, two shows on Tuesday, two shows on Wednesday, Thursday, I hosted the ISAs. And on Friday, I shot three sh episodes. And then on Saturday, I did the um, uh, Easter Seals di uh, Disability Challenge. So I, that was another script I had to do. Uh, Monday, I got sick. <laughs> but next Monday, I just was burned out. But I have found that because I'm memorizing so much that when I have to go to memorize a, a script for an audition, it comes easier for me to memorize them faster because I'm so used to putting them in my head. So, and my head usually is about the size of yours and this size and this big up here because my brain is expanding like this. One day I'm just going to go like this. Oh my God. I want to just laugh. Oh my God. And uh, how psyched are you that live events are finally making a return? I'm sorry, live events? Yes. I, I'm in not, person. I'm, oh, well, you know what? I really, ha I'm supposed to do one in Florida next week or Friday the 13th. I fly to Florida uh, and I've done Samantha's Friends a number of times. They raise money for the Southeastern Guide Dogs. Uh, it's a fabulous um, charity. And my, I think um, I'm going to be with Eric and... Um, Oh my gosh, I, I don't have the whole list in front of me. Like Stacy Haddock and I are going to do something. Probably she's crazy. I adore her. She's she knows how to be evil, 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 but she's crazy and fun. Um, oh my god, and you should see her house. Her husband, he is such a craftsman. He's done these fabulous cutouts and wood things. He works with his hands. He's amazing. Anyway, that I digress. Sorry. Um, so. Um, I think Eric and um, Kyle and um, I can't think of everybody else that's going to be there, but it's going to be a fun thing. We usually this week, this, this time they're doing something called them um, the uh, uh, Vegas, the gambling thing. So we're, it's going to be a wild and crazy time. It's, and I get to see a lot of the fans who've become friends and uh, I enjoy it. Um, uh, my husband has a, has a, had a heart problem. So I'm very careful about being around people still. I've been double boosted and so has he, but I'm going to Florida, which is a little political. They're not as keen on, <laughs> keen yeah. on vaccinations. So um, it, it, you're just a little more wary with people coming into your space now than you used to be. Um, and I'm a hugger. I'm get right in there and hug. So uh, I have to just kind of watch myself a little bit that I don't get too wackadoodle, but um, it's going to be hard because I am wackadoodle and I am, I, I so appreciate my fans and some of them, like I said, have become very close friends. So there'll be a lot of hugging um, and we'll, I'll be home with that home test, dropping some up my nose, putting it to make sure I'm okay. So, Aww. well, I'll definitely say a prayer for you. Thank you, my darling. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. You just need to surround yourself with the white light of the Holy Spirit. 
Uh, well, you know what I try to, I, you know, I put out what I want to get back. And I think um, in this kind of an aspect you're doing, I'm doing it for charity. And I don't think God would punish me for doing something for no. charity or anybody that we're with. So the more you give, the more you get back. And tell I think us, so. tell us a little bit about Studio City and what's it like, you know, doing a soap on a digital platform. Well, uh, let's see how I've, I've done several of them. I mean, I did the first when, when um, days had the, um, uh, their, when they had their app and they were doing stuff, which kind of dropped and went away, but now the peacock has picked it up. So I did the, that one there at ladies of the lake, um, uh, studio city. Um, I, I got my Emmy from doing, uh, uh, acting dead, which was kind of a digital series. Uh, let's see. I mean, I've done a lot of them and, uh, it is the future. And that's what I, I think is the frustrating point where they keep getting rid of so many soaps and that we only have four left is these digital series are the soaps. It's like, it really know, are. it's like, come on guys, you're getting rid of these, but here they are. Um, I, um, I'm working with someone right now that I would like to start um, in some production and bringing some of the actors that haven't, we haven't seen from another world. And as you know, all my children, as the world turns, I mean, all those things that th there are so many fans for that loved and adored them and um, bringing the, some of those actors together and doing some kind of digital thing. So, uh, so my producing partner and I are kind of working on that and we'll see what'll happen there. Because again, like I said, the digital series as you're doing with your program right this moment, it's the future. Um, I, I can't work this, this computer, I'm not good on the phone. Um, and then of course I have an Android and everybody I know has a, has an Apple and I'm like, I don't get it. <laughs> get it. Apple's a lot easier though. It, it I, really well, is. I, you know, I'm finding out Apple's a lot easier, but my husband and his friend who is recent, who passed, they built the computer and did all that. So they're very, they were very PC, which of course, as he's my husband, he had me PC. Well, <laughs> now everybody I work with is Apple. So who knows, maybe we'll end up transferring over and doing something because um, it's a little easier to do. Um, Anthony, I go see Anthony, like I will go from here to see Anthony because he's filming an audition for me uh, because I, 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 it's all above my head and casting hasn't got unified as to how they want something done. One minute they want just a headshot, then they want a body shot, full length body shot. Then you have to do a slate. And on the slate, you have to say, I'm this tall, I live here. I'm fully vaccinated and that varies. And then you have to go back and do your scene. And then you have to do the scene another way because they wanna see it two ways. And then you have to edit all this together, drop it into this and send it off to either Echo Cast, Casting Networks. It's crazy, it's crazy. Um, COVID has made the actors become technically savvy. Well, some of them, because I'm not there yet. <laughs> it's like, no. Uh, but uh, it, it is tough because we not only now as performers in an audition sense, we have to film our stuff, learn the lines. They want them learned, want them memorized. So you got to memorize the lines. Then you have to set up if I went in my front room right this moment, you could see I have a ring light. I have a big drop up because they want a neutral background, but not white, not white. You've got to have a neutral background. Well, if you don't have, if your walls are painted white, you're in trouble. So you got to put something up. So now I have a ring light. Now I have to set up my tripod with the ring light, put in the camera. Then I have to film myself the two or three ways. Then I have to download it on a computer. Then I have to send it over to somebody else. Yep. I mean, it's, it's crazy. No, and you kind of go like, you kind of go like, shouldn't the casting director be doing this? And if I'm going to work, obviously they're approving me to go to work and be around other people. Why can't I go into the casting person's office and let them do all this? <laughs> Plus it's always better. The casting person are the voice of the producers. If you're with a, am I digressing? Are, are you interested? No, keep in going. Yes. Where I'm like, yeah. I'm in a trance right now. <laughs> okay. If the casting person has the ear of the producer or the director, so when you go in there and they're gonna go, you know what? I love what you're doing right this moment, but they kind of want to see this character a different way. Can you, can you try it this way? So now they're giving you an option of two ways. The director can now see the way you interpreted it and then the way they've been interpreting it. And suddenly they go, I like what she did better. Or you get those kind of things. But we, we as performers are not getting that feedback now. We just, we do what we think they want. 
because they don't tell you <laughs> they just, right. this this is how you're going to slate it, but they don't tell you this carrot swack a doodle and she's going to be like this and she talks really fast and she uses her hands all the time and she really wants to know. You know, they don't tell you that part. So you have to either figure that out from the dialogue. Yeah. Whatever. So it's it's become very crazy um, as for performers and a little tougher because you have to be a technical savvy person as well as an actor. So it's crazy. Crazy. Hello. <laughs> well, we're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back. And we are back with Patrika Darbo. So who have you worked with who surprised you the most? It surprised me good or surprised me bad or like just was like, oh, I can't believe it. Like, honey, listen, meeting Sidney Poitier and being directed by him, fabulous, fabulous. Oh. I mean, he was like uh, an icon for, uh, you know, I mean, I can remember watching him win for Lilies of the Field. I mean, that kind of thing. Um, uh, Clint Eastwood, uh, John Malkovich. Okay, I knew what the part was going to be. I knew the man was going to kill me. The man is an artist. He was designing his kitchen and I think it was in Paris. But he, I had a friend who said, if I don't, if I don't get to meet him, Patrick, I will kill you. And I was like, okay, I, I will see. <laughs> you could come on the set with me. Anyway, um, they allowed her to come. We were doing a stage play together. Um, and he talked for an hour and a half to her about theater. He didn't have to, he could have been in his dress room and said, F you, but he was so kind and wonderful with theater. Well, then when he had to kill us, he wanted to make sure when we were working with the stunt, uh, the stunt coordinator that it was one, two, three, not one, two and three, but one, two, three, so that we all turned and we all did everything. So no one got hurt, ultimate professional. So was Clint Eastwood. He liked what John and I did in the bank, not the killing scene, but the scene in the bank. And he hired me to do Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. So um, that was wonderful. Sandra Bullock, honey, she is the girl next door. So kind, so talented. Um, and she was amazing. She threw a party for the cast and the crew uh, on a beach when we were filming Speed 2. Um, she just was amazing. Um, who else? Bo Bridges, the best. Beverly Dean. I mean, I've really worked with some wonderfully talented people. Um, Suzanne Summers, Patrick Duffy doing that. I still see and talk to a number of the kids that were on that show, even though myself and Peggy Ray, who played the mother, may she rest in peace. We, um, we still are kind of family. I mean, we talk to each other. We see each other. We know each other. And I, again, like I said, I talk to some of the kids all the time. So um, I've been very lucky. I play in Jason Alexander's um, fundraising for We Spark, which is a cancer organization. Um, he has a big uh, poker tournament. So I play in the poker tournament and, um, and have the best time. Don't know a thing about what I'm doing, but I have the best time ever. <laughs> and I'm usually like, I'll buy in one more time. It's for charity like this. But uh, you know what? I've, I, I really want to, as I kind of look back and go, I, I've been very blessed and I'm very grateful. Nice. And having worked in everything from stage to digital, is there a medium you've yet to, to conquer? Uh, oh, I would love to do Broadway. I have not done Broadway and I would love to do it before I die. That's on my bucket list. If not, I'll do it in heaven. So it's okay. But um, I, I think uh, that would be fun. I love, I love live theater. Live theater for any actor is immediate gratification. There's nothing like hearing this or people laughing or <gasps> like this when you're doing something. Um, I mean, I love every medium that I've worked in. Some are faster as soaps are faster um, and some are not as well budgeted as others. Uh, a, a lot of us, when we're doing these digital series, we don't get paid. It's all deferred. So, um, you know, so it's the love of the person you're working with and has asked you to participate and also that they're giving you an opportunity to do something. So um, I'm, I'm very grateful uh, for um 
the Bay, doing the Bay, which is, was one of the first digital things uh, series that came out. Um, I, I got an Emmy nomination from that. It, it didn't work out and they took the Emmy back, but that's another whole story we'll do on another show. Um, I got Emmy nominated for, for um, excuse me, Studio City. I won an Emmy for Acting Dead. So it's, um, you know, I, I can say to everybody, uh, there are small parts. You just make them your own and they grow, they grow. And this person you meet today, I think for me, the one thing I can say to anybody that's listening, it doesn't cost you anything to be kind and polite and nice. Mm -hmm. And when you are, it comes back to you threefold. It always does. Agreed. Agreed. And on Instagram, you posted about We Spark Cancer Fundraiser. Are there other charities uh, that are near and dear to your heart? Um, well, cancer, because my dad had, had cancer. So that was there. Um, I, uh, and, and Wendy Jo Sperber, who founded We Spark, uh, it was funny because we used to go up against each other all the time as performers, um, both character actresses, both around. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, uh, so, and she was wonderful. Um, uh, and we lost a great talent. Um, I like to do the Southeastern Guide Dogs. Um, I, I have a lot of dog charities here that I work with and stuff if they need anything. Um, I think last year I had uh, uh, the, the rescue train. I donated money through Facebook and stuff. I mean, I, it, for me, I am very animal, child, and veterinarian. I'm not veterinarians, veterans um, yes. that I try to support. Um, I, I, if you mess with a kid or an animal, I will kill you. There's, you know, that you don't even have to ask me or send me to trial. I, love you. I did it. I did I love it. You. I did it. Uh, <laughs> and, and our vets, I think our vets are so mistreated and need to be uh, treated better. I am also on the board of directors for the Thalians, which is an organization that was started by Debbie Reynolds back in the you know, 50s. Um, and they raise money for mental health. Uh, and primarily we give... Um, we give over $200,000 a number of times a year to um, UCLA's Operation MEND to take care of our returning vets who may have PTSD, may have been burned and need care there. So that's the organization we work with and um, I'm very proud of it. And we try to have different events that raise money for them. So um, if you haven't heard about the Thalians, please look them up um, and come join us, sign up to be a member if you can. Um, and again, you know, just look in your neighborhoods and take care of it. I will say to you, there are a lot of scam things out there. So be very careful where you put your money, do a little investigation first. Um, and, uh, you know, but support taking care of your animals and please everybody stay in neuter. Um, and if you can, um, even if you want an, even if we want a, a purebred dog, there are rescues that have them that the parent couldn't take care of them or something happened and they need your love there too. And she's a mutt, my little Dusty that you saw is a mutt. She's and adorable. I love her. So, God bless yeah. her. So. And um, besides golf, what else do you like to do when you're not acting? <laughs> I, mean, I know you do charity and I'm, and I'm, I, we have a project called the keep the peace project, which basically, uh, we're trying to launch it for God knows how long, but we revamp homes of veterans, make it handicapped accessible any way we possibly can help a veteran who served for our country so that we could be free. If you um, need me, I'm there. Just ask I, me and I, I, I will you know, I just raise what like money. This guy needed a, a dog for her, his son, his son has PTSD and, um, He's in Maryland and, and we said, listen, set up the GoFundMe and we just send people there. We don't want to handle no money. We just want to help. You know what? You should con contact Operation Mend through UCLA because that's mm -hmm. what they do, a lot of it. And we give money there. But this organization takes care of returning vets with PTSD. Um, at a last big event that we had, I sat next to a, um, a, a soldier, returning soldier who had his own dog uh, who knows when he's like this and can't the dog comforts him and takes care of him so check them i don't know if they're nationwide or not i can't answer that question i wish i could um and see because then maybe it's a tie-in that you can do there uh for yeah, your definitely. fundraisers um or even check with um the thalians to see if there's a way you guys can all we can all get together and to do something so yeah again i'm all I, for that yeah i mean you well, know i just mess with elderly you don't mess with kids you don't mess with pets and you don't mess with our veterans no, no, uh -uh. no, <laughs> no, I won't have to have a trial. I will admit I did it because I will kill you. 
I love it. <laughs> Don't so, do it. What else Don't do you do, do besides golf? Well, um, and I play golf, I'm primarily doing that. But most of the time, I'm just kind of taking care of my husband. Um, when he had his heart issues, he had a couple of minor strokes. So his short term memory is it's very much like he's in the stages of dementia or a little Alzheimer's because he can't remember stuff. So that's been a little bit of a test. So I don't do a lot outside because I'm basically watching where he is and stuff, which has raised my stress levels quite a bit. Um, when for, for days I've played on the day's basketball team, I played on the softball team. Um, I listen, I, I, I do it all if I can. So, uh, and don't tell me I can't because that's where I go. I do take Pilates twice a week, which I recommend for anybody that might be um, not wanting to do a pounding exercise, but just wants to tone up their muscles and do stuff. Uh, it's very, um, the stronger your spine is, the straighter you're going to be, the healthier you're going to be. And it's a, it's a wonderful thing. And so um, I haven't taken my tap dancing in a while because that's been a little bit, but stressful not I love to go into my dance classes so you know what if you want to do it you go do it don't and don't let anybody tell you oh you're too old or oh you're too fat or you're too blah 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 don't you know I just like mm -mm, no <laughs> sorry <laughs> sorry no if you want it you can have it and go do it don't let anybody you tell you can't and don't tell yourself you can't because can that's anything. what the universe hears so I can do anything that you can, everybody can do anything. You just have to go every, and let me just say, it's not easy sometimes. It's not easy sometimes. I'm in one of the toughest, there's so much rejection in my business. I mean, you just learn to not take it personally. You wouldn't be in the room as a performer auditioning if you didn't have talent because the casting director is not gonna run the risk of bringing in somebody they don't know or that they, they have no idea if they can act or not. So you are already talented. Now it just is the fact that you're blonde you're dark haired, you're tall, you're short, you're, you know, it's, it's stuff that you can't control. So just go do your best. Know that you are the best. You were in that room and there's, you know, nobody can tell you you're bad because you're the only one there is. And you, you know, know but I mean, you've got to do that. I mean, if, if people, if you keep letting people live your lives for you, you know, and a life lived in fear is only half lived. So don't, don't, don't. I agree. Uh, tell us about your stepdad, who was known as the biggest little man in baseball. Uh, my stepdad, who basically was my dad, um, he uh, Don Davidson was his name. He started with the um, Boston Braves, Milwaukee Braves, Atlanta Braves. Uh, he was in the front office all the time because he's only four foot two. We called him Booby High at home because <laughs> he just came up to the top of our chest. Um, uh, and then we, when we moved to Atlanta, we came, became the Atlanta Braves. And before he passed, he was with the Houston Astros because he had a little, uh, anyway, whatever. Uh, uh, he was amazing. And he said, if you want it, you can have it. And I looked at my dad and thought, he's absolutely right. If I want it, I can have it. Um, but I also remember I'm of the generation where it was like, you need to learn to type. You need to learn to take shorthand. Otherwise, you won't be having work. You know, women, women can't do <laughs> anyway, that kind of stuff. When I first started working in the real world, as I called it, uh, in a secretarial kind of position, it was the time when women had to wear hose to work, had to wear dresses or skirts. There were no slacks allowed. Then in the late uh, mid 70s, they allowed you to wear slacks, but it had to be a pants suit. It wasn't like you could just wear a blouse. No, -uh. you had to have a pants suit. And you always had to have your heels on and don't wear too much perfume and modest jewelry and blah, 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 blah. I mean, it's, um, it's a man's world. Uh, we are trying to change it, but we still only make 87 cents on the dollar to the men. So ladies, power, come on. So, this is a women's yeah. own company, right? Well, here. that's what I was just going to say. You guys, you know, that's, this is what it's about. You know what? It's like, again, you are an individual. You are the most perfect being there is. God created you. He didn't create you to be under the thumb of some gentleman, even if it's your husband. It's a teamwork thing. Marriage is a 100 100 because if either one of you give up 50% of yourself, you're not entering into it a whole thing. So marriage is 100 and 100, and it's the best ever. Been married 48 years. Let me just tell you, 
that. And marrying your best friend is always the best. We're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll be okay. right back. Okay. <laughs> with Patrika Darbo. Now, can you please tell us, you've been married for 50 years. What type of advice would you give to couples? Well, not quite 50 yet. I'm waiting for that. And I'm going, hmm, what can I get my husband to buy me at my gold in it? <laughs> um, I uh, think the most important thing is the fact that you, that um, there's a difference between I love you and I like you. Hmm. I think you need to like and love whoever you're getting involved with. And sometimes you kind of go, you know, I do love you, but sometimes I don't like you. And I, that does happen. But I think basically for me, as I started to say earlier, is that marriage is not 50-50. Because if either one of you are entering into a relationship you want to last a long time, then you need to come in 100-100. Don't give up 50% of yourself. And it's an equal, equal partnership, equal partnership. Um, I, one thing I will say in my marriage that I've had right now and a mistake, um, and I don't like to use the mistake. It was, it's a learning thing for me. And it's, um, I'm a little old for this learning thing. <laughs> so, um, uh, I, uh, it's get, it's a little harder for me, but you're both young. You still are half of my age. So you're still, you know, You've got time too. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's just still got time. So the basic thing is um, my husband and I had a partnership in the fact that he has always been my business manager and I've been the actor part after we after I left doing the real world stuff, which I'll tell you about in a minute. Um, he and he worked for Disney doing stuff. But then when um, Eisner came in and they changed the whole thing, he and all the people that were non-union, all the people that had been with Disney since Disney had been there kind of got swept out the door. Here's your 20 years. We love you and bye-bye. Anyway, so I have always done the earning kind of thing. And he's always handled this. So my house is paid for. I mean, we've worked together. Now that his memory is a little wonky doodle, I'm having to try to catch up. So um, when I say it's a partnership, learn what your husband's doing and have him learn what you're doing so that if something happens to one of you and you can't do it right away, um, that you, you're not left behind the door and kind of right now I'm at the door and I've only got that much open right this moment. Uh, so it's tough. So try to make sure in that partnership that you learn what each other does and, and so that you can take care of one another when that thing happens like this. Um, but being, um, being best friends with each other, um, patience, those are some good things to remember. Hmm. Beautiful. And you're a huge advocate for being kind. So how do you do it when you have those moments when you just rather not be? Well, it, <laughs> I think that happens a lot to all of us, but I, I kind of go, all right, maybe they're having a bad day. Um, you, I can be kind up to three times on the third time. If you're doing something that I'm like, then I'm done. I'm not going to yell or scream stuff, but I'm done with you. Done with you. <laughs> you know, I, I, you know, I, I've given you nothing but good. And if you're just going to keep giving this back to me, why waste my time on you when I can go over here to this person who's only given me good and I give good back and forth. So you have to learn that there are some people in your life that you need to say goodbye to because they're doing nothing for you, nothing. And when I say for you, I don't mean like they're, it's a gratuitous kind of thing. I'm meaning the fact that they feed your soul as you feed their soul, that there's a kindness, there's a reciprocation going on. But if somebody's constantly taking or bitching, you don't need that. You don't need that. 
try to eliminate that. But also remember, if it happens like once or twice, then maybe they're in a bad space. But again, you're not a mind reader and they're not a mind reader. So you need to talk about it. Like, is, is, is something I did that we need to discuss? Or are you treating me this because you think you have a right to? And if that's the truth, no, you don't. So you, you need to deal with that kind of thing. Um, because no one deserves to treat you unkind, especially if you are giving out positive kindness to them. And yes, there are times I can be a bitch too, but generally it's because I'm having a bad day. And then there's times where you kind of go, I'm so sorry, Michelle, that I um, talked to you that way. I was not in a good place and I apologize. Apologize, it doesn't, right? If, if it's sincere and you really mean it, apologize. And hopefully Michelle will understand that I was coming from a bad place. And if you don't, it's your choice to say, you know what, you hurt me from that. And um, I'm, it's going to take me a while to get over that. Okay, we all have different places we are. So be understanding. And that's part of being kind. Amen. And don't judge people too, unless you've walked in their shoes. Oh, yes. I hate being judged. People just sit there and say, oh, yeah, I can't even go there on that one. Well, but it's just, I mean, and generally what you have to remember in that aspect is the judgment is coming from the jealousy. They want yeah. to be you. They want to well, be you. I don't know if they want to be me. They might want to hit me every now and then. No. <laughs> well, I mean, there's a times where we all have to kind of sit down and go, that person really upset me. Don't let them get into my space and stuff like that. But I think a lot of times when people are being unkind or being judgy, there's a jealous element there. You are a successful businesswoman. Okay. If this person's not a successful person, they're going to resent you and they're going to find ways to kind of just come in and do something, you know, because yeah, I mean, that makes the, it makes them feel better. You know, like you go, you know what? I'm so sorry that you feel that you have to make, do that to me. Um, but you know what? If, if that's how you want to treat, you don't need to be in my life. So you go judge that person because I don't need it. <laughs> bye bye. The so thing is, people don't understand, like, it's not that you're kicking them especially because a lot of, a lot of times it's family that does that, but you're not kicking them out of your life for good. You're just, they're not, they're just not in this chapter guys. So. Honey, my own dad, who we talked a while ago said to me at one point, that's enough money for a woman to be making. I was like, what <laughs> are, are you kidding me? It's like, yeah, but that's, that, then, there's right. things that are generational. Sometimes you have to realize that you have to think about, you know, our parents uh, came from a different age thing and what was going on. Um, and unfortunately, we are still perpetuating that male over female kind of thing. Um, and I'm not sure how we can change that as women, um, but probably standing up for ourselves and going, you know what, I don't care who you're voting for. I've done my research. This is who I'm voting for. You have a brain and a mouth. You use it and do your own investigation. Just because your husband's doing this doesn't mean you have to do this. So you're an independent, strong person. Really? Really? So anyway, I don't like those people. That, My husband said that um, President so-and-so is not doing a good job. So um, I think that perhaps we should. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> stop. Anyway, I love it. Oh, I love it too. Um, so you have a new project with Sean Kanan coming up, The Bubble. Can you tell us uh, a little bit about it? The Bubble is the old name for Studio City. That was um, the first thing. I mean, I've worked with Kay, uh, Sean several, several times like this uh, for doing different events over the our vast 20 years of knowing one another. Uh, Studio City started as the bubble and they developed it into this series that's going on right this moment. I haven't been available for the last couple and stuff like that, but um, the show has been uh, recognized by the Emmys strongly. And um, I, I certainly continue to you know, do things with him. Uh, that sounded a little rude, but um, <laughs> to keep working with Sean, um, uh, uh, I think he's wonderfully talented and he's, you know, he's back on bold and the beautiful like this. So, uh, it's, it's a great thing as well. So I don't know where he's going to find the time, but that's something else that he's working on. I'm trying to think if he's, um, if there's something we're doing together anytime soon, but I don't, 
I don't, I don't know right this moment because we've both been so crazy busy. So sometimes you're, you're away from people that you've worked with a lot because work comes up and you can't, um, you can't be there at this point. So, uh, but that's what that's from. Uh, it's, it's amazing. I mean, the other thing which you should look into if you get a chance and did you watch um, uh, Taco Tuesday? It's, uh, if you find Taco Tuesday on the um, uh, Easter Seals uh, website for Disability Challenge, I did that show with um, Jamie from uh, Horror Story. Uh, so it, it, we, nice. it's, these are little, these things they get, you like get the script on Friday, um, you shoot it on Saturday and you edit it, music, put music to it and do everything and have it into the Easter Seals by Sunday. It's and like you had 20, to do all that? I, yeah, well, I didn't have to do it. I just acted. Uh, but the director and he had to edit and he had to have somebody come over and do the music for him. And then he had to do everything and it all has to be submitted. And there's a, there were a number of people that submitted different little shows and stuff. Um, what they do is they go like this. Okay. In this show, you've got to have, you're going to have to use green. You're going to have to use the color green somewhere. You're going to have to say green. You also have um, this one. You've got a superhero and you have to use a clock. So now the writer has to go oh, something green, a clock and a superhero. So he has to write a short little five minute, yeah. 10 minute thing with those three things must be in it. And the, uh, having somebody who is in the disability category to come in and work with you. So, and I don't like the word disability because I don't think there is anybody that's disabled. Um, physically, they may have some impairment or mentally they may have some impairment that we don't have, but I don't think that disables them in any way whatsoever. So. And, um, are there any other projects you want to promote? Uh, you know, at this point, I've, I've so been so busy with days. I'm not doing anything right now. Again, I talked about the failings you should check into. Um, uh, and I'll probably get off the phone and go, oh, why didn't I mention this? I'm playing golf in the George Lopez uh, uh, golf tournament on Monday. Uh, they raise money for the uh, kidneys, kidney camp oh, wow. for kids, kids that are either having a kidney transplant or have had one to get in so they can go to camp. So it raises money for a low income and people, kids to go to camp. So we're playing um, uh, in that. I'm playing in that golf tournament. This is, I think, my third. What's your par? I'm sorry. What's your my par? par? <laughs> I don't have a par. My, uh, my, um, my handicap is a 35, which is not that great, right but I do damn good out there. I, well, I came in second place last year with my team, so it was very good. <laughs> we had fun. Um, but it, again, it raises a lot of money for the, uh, the kids. We play at um, Lakeside Golf Course, which is um, right, um, by, right across from Warner Brothers. It's a beautiful course. Um, mm -hmm. So they've been very kind to let George have them tournament there all the time. Um, Anthony's their publicist. He's been putting it all together and he's up to his eyelashes. So the, I'm so grateful that he's going to be doing this audition for me because I can't. So um, I'm driving over to him so he can film it for me. He, um, he has, um, who lets him try to he's think. He's amazing. Uh, he, he really is. I mean, besides George and stuff, I mean, usually um, uh, you can, you know what you can do? If you can tell anybody or publish it out, I will do this. Uh, the George Lopez Foundation has a number of great uh, auction items that are through um, Charity Buzz uh, for George Lopez Golf Foundation, Charity Buzz. There's a huge days package. So any of the days fans out there that are listening, you can go on there and bid. I think the last bid was 350. There's, um, I donated the hourglass in there. Uh, days what? gave us a big back. Yeah, one of the hourglass um, that I got when I left the show the first time. It's about this big. It's a, an hourglass through the sands of time. Anyway, uh, so I got goosebumps. Now okay, I got so a it's a beautiful basket. I think there's a hat and there's probably a sweatshirt. There's the book. There's all kinds of things in this basket that the days people gave us. Plus, I added that. And Sean, let's see, um, uh, Eric Marksoff, myself, um, uh, Kyle, 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 and um, what's Rafe's first name? Oh, can't, my names are like crazy in my I'm head. I'm very right. bad with names. Okay, That's he Virginia plays Rafe, he plays Rafe, and he, um, and he plays Rex. Those two are kind of, the, okay. and they've signed autograph pictures in there uh, to everybody. I mean, so it's a beautiful basket. There are several trips and scooters and all kinds of things that people have donated. But for the Days fans, um, I hope you can go in there and bid for that because, again, all the monies go to charity for the Kids for Kidney Foundation. So, so. 
they're taking like autographs and stuff. I got tons of autographs that I've done at Comic Cons with people that I'm gonna I'm gonna send some into Anthony. No, he'll love that. You should, but, but make it a Mupo uh, entertainment package. Uh, like we should just have you on board with Mupo. Oh my God, <laughs> that was like I would have never even thought of that because I. Just, oh yeah, make it a I'm Mupo a entertainment package and donate. Talk to him when we're done. Let him know you're going to send it over there because I mean that's you know it's just it publicizes for you. Whatever you put in there is for charity. Um, if if you have it like you've got a T-shirt on, I see a shirt should go in the back package. If you have a hat, some just do a Mupo box. I mean, thing. That's All a right, great thing. Yeah, yeah, I'm down. I'm down. Okay. I mean, it's a definite thing you should do. I mean, um, forever. And um, listen, honey, I'm all about woman power. I'm there. Just you need me. And if, for your charity, if I can, you know, it's a little hard from California, but I uh, listen. Well, we maybe can you could do it through. Well, we'll figure something out. There and we're, go, gonna take, we're actually going to take a quick commercial break and we'll be okay. right back with the conclusion of our interview. Okay. Welcome back. And before we wrap things up, we have one last question. If you were to interview yourself, what question would you ask and what would the answer be? So, Miss Starbo, you are a fat actress. I mean, I'm just going to come right out and say that you're overweight. And how do you survive in Hollywood? I mean, these ladies are all like very things. Mm -hmm. Well, that's kind of a tough question. I mean, when I first started, I had a uh, casting director tell me that unless I lost weight, I probably wouldn't work in this town. That was 1968. Now I am a three-time Emmy nominated, one-time Emmy winning actress. Um, and you know what? Don't let anybody tell you, you can't have what you want. And that's what I'd tell them. I love that. I love, I love that. And we want to thank you. And it's been such a treat visiting with you. Look for Patrika Darbo in Hadget on TubiTV.com, Studio City on Amazon Prime, Days of Our Lives, Weekdays on NBC, and you can also hear her in Ringo on HBO Max. You can follow, like, and subscribe to Patrika on Facebook under Patrika Darbo, on Instagram at Darbo Patrika, and on Twitter at Patrika Darbo. And as always, thank you for tuning in to Mupo and Friends, courtesy of Mupo TV. And you could catch this show and many others at www.mupotv.com. That's www.mupotv.com. And also catch us on Roku, Fire Stick, and make sure you download our app on Android and iOS. This is Manuela Messina with our host, Michelle Mupo. And until next time, have a Mupo awesome week. <laughs>